Good evening, I'm Jessica Savage, and this is NBC Nightly News. Five days, 80 orbits, 2.1 million miles later, and America's second space shuttle returned home safely today. The Challenger touched down at 10.53 a.m. California time at Edwards Air Force Base, and our science correspondent, Robert Bazell, was there. Long-range cameras picked up the Challenger just after it passed over the California coast, heading back toward Earth from its first trip into space. A crowd of 250,000 people waited at Edwards Air Force Base on a sunny but windy Saturday morning. The winds gusting over 30 miles per hour presented no problem to the spacecraft as it landed on the concrete runway. One of the objectives of this mission was to test the brakes on the Challenger's wheels. They worked. The Challenger stopped about 7,000 feet down the runway from the point where its wheels touched down. A little while later, the four astronauts, looking slightly wobbly from their five days in zero gravity, walked down the stairs. That is Commander Paul White's first, followed by Story Musgrave, Donald Peterson, and Carl Bobko. They told the crowd they liked the new spaceship. I really think the Challenger is one hell of a flying machine. The head of the shuttle program agreed. Uh, with, the, with the exception of the, the problem areas that we had uh, uh, during the deployment of the IUS and, uh, and the separation of the TDRS satellite, uh, the mission was, was just incredibly uh, routine. But the problems with the communication satellite are serious. In the next few weeks, NASA will try to put it into the proper orbit, and a board of inquiry will try to find out what happened to it. If those efforts fail, the entire shuttle program will be knocked way off schedule. Meanwhile, the Challenger will be flown back to Florida, where technicians will try to get it ready for another trip into space in early June. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Edwards Air Force Base, California. The Challenger crew was America's oldest to date. The combined flying experience of the four, 111 years, so Mission Control dubbed them the Geritol Bunch. Two major volcanic eruptions today. We'll have details on Etna and Kilauea next. Oh, I can't face these bills with this headache, Patricia. Well, there's no cure for bills, mm. but you can fight headache pain and win with Anison. But why Anison? Anison has more medicine than any regular strength pain reliever. I didn't know that. I'll try it. I feel so much better. Terrific. Now if I could just get rid of these bills. Like Anison got rid of your headache? <laughs> Anison and maximum strength Anison fight pain and win. This roomy, inexpensive Subaru station wagon not only goes far on a gallon of gas, it also goes almost anywhere on a gallon of gas, thanks to front-wheel drive. But if you want more traction than our wagon with front-wheel drive, we suggest our wagon with on-demand four-wheel drive. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. I know this hurts. Two-in-one plus reflecting flea and tick collar really saved my cat's life because I was driving the car that almost hit her. I was about a half a block from home. I don't know how she got out, but all of a sudden I saw a bright glow up the street. Her heart's collar was reflecting my headlights. Thank goodness I had time to stop. Cats really need nighttime safety. Plus they get five months of flea and tick protection, all from the heart's two-in-one plus reflecting collar. Now the famous heart's flea and tick killer can be a lifesaver too. Lava flowed today from two volcanoes, one in Sicily and one in Hawaii. A fresh flow of molten rock spilled from Mount Etna. It damaged the lodge of an Italian alpine club and it destroyed a chalet nearby. This is the 13th day of eruption of the Sicilian volcano. Then in Hawaii at Kilauea, the lava flow is bigger, potentially more damaging, as we hear in this report from Don Oliver. It was dusk when the lava flow began to eat into the Royal Garden subdivision. The 150 residents were ordered out for the third time since January. In the evening and well into the night, Kilauea's fountain was pumping out nearly 100,000 cubic yards of hot lava every minute. In the subdivision, it ate through six houses. But at 4 o'clock this morning, after 11 days of activity, the volcano stopped. Geologists who've watched it 24 hours a day think it may be the end of a phase. It just seems uh, from the, the way it's been acting that, that it's been shutting off for about three weeks between, between uh, episodes. 
But the head of the lava flow munched on hours later down King Street, pushed by gravity, the hot lava already in the channel. Well, it's just a question now of just watching this flow creep, and it should continue, I would imagine, for the next couple of days. Scientists say that earth tremors here are now at their lowest point since January. But they also say that's no guarantee that Kilauea won't crank back up at any time. What does that mean to the people who live up here? Dave Ford says he's staying. He has a sense of humor. And so does Harry Lousman. You just got to go with the flow. <laughs> In the end, Madam Pele will probably have her way anyway. Don Oliver, NBC News on the island of Hawaii. There was some sunshine today in Louisiana and Mississippi. Four days of rain had forced 27,000 people to flee and it cost 11 lives. Today, people living upstream began moving back, checking out the damages, starting to clean up. Those downstream still waited for the floodwaters to reach them. Dan Molina has a report. In much of the flooded region today, rivers had crested. Although hundreds of square miles were still underwater, some people began moving back into their homes. Generally, the worst is over. The sun was also shining today on the small Louisiana town of French Settlement, but here floodwaters were steadily advancing. Townspeople volunteered to fill sandbags for anyone who needed them. We just saw the bad fix that everybody was in. They all needed the sand, they needed the bags, and somebody, we just came out here to help them, to help them try to save their homes. These people here know each other? Or is it some do, some don't. There was a rush to get a truckload of sandbags to Mrs. Terry Guitro. Her husband was in the hospital, and the water was inches from her house. Well, this is all new to me. I've, we've never had water here before. What do you think of the young folks helping you like that? That's great. I'd have never thought that I'd have seen all these young people out here. I called them, and they came right on out with the sand in the bags. And they're doing their job. A few miles north of French settlement, the Amid River crested at mid-afternoon. Downstream in this region of Louisiana, peak water levels probably won't come until tomorrow. Floodwaters will continue to rise in a few areas until Monday. Dan Molina, NBC News, French Settlement, Louisiana. Coming up, is this the return of King Kong? Stay tuned. Next. Good night. <laughs> well, good night. I had fun. It's really cold. I could make some coffee. Times like these are made for Taster's Choice. Taster's Choice, a premium blend of some of the world's best coffee beans. Freeze-dried to keep its fresh brute flavor for your best coffee times. This is the time, America. Go for it. Go for Michelin and get all the tire your money can buy. Go for Michelin performance. Go for Michelin fuel economy and long tire life. Go for Michelin handling. Don't settle for less. Go for Michelin. This is the time. This is the tire. This is the place. We put America on radials. We want to put you on Michelin. Wow. We took the label off Aquafresh to show you what nobody else has. Our triple protection formula. All the cavity-fighting fluoride of the leading paste. All the breath freshener of the leading gel. And gentle cleaners that even remove stained film. Concentrated in one complete toothpaste. Hmm, so that's what triple protection looks like. Triple protection Aquafresh. A complete toothpaste. Fifty years ago, the movie King Kong made cinema history. To commemorate that event, an attempt was made to put a new King Kong atop the Empire State Building. It was an epic in itself, as Norma Quarles reports. For the past six days, workmen have been trying to put the ten-story replica of King Kong atop New York's Empire State Building, where the giant ape made film history fifty years ago. But it was almost harder getting this Kong onto the building than it was to shoot the original down in the film. The 3,000-pound balloon was rigged wrong and could have ended up clinging to the 102-story building upside down. Then he was torn by one of 22 windows broken during hoisting. 
Promoters have spent more than $100,000 on the inflated monster. They say it's a fitting tribute to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the film King Kong, the picture that saved RKO Studios from bankruptcy in 1933. Children, whose parents weren't even born when the film was made, seem to have a special affection for King Kong. He has a finger. He's big and scary and climbs up buildings. The size of him is, you know, it's unbelievable. So I wanted to see him, and you don't usually see him around, around here. Workman spent most of today trying to hoist the deflated ape to his perch, but once again, things went wrong. They'll try again tomorrow to put King Kong where many would like to see him, on the Empire State Building. Norma Quarles, NBC News, New York. Finally, potential office holders usually throw their hats in the ring, so to speak, and then let the voters decide. In Kingston, Idaho, Harry Holland and Robert Panokin threw themselves into the ring and slugged their way to a decision on who would be the city mayor. Holland, the incumbent, declared himself the mayor of the tiny town 15 years ago. He had no duties and he had no challengers, that is, until Pan Conan, a former Secret Service employee. The winner? The incumbent, Harry Holland. And incidentally, a winner, the Silver Valley Idaho Boxing Club, the recipient of the $2 per ticket admission. And that is our report tonight. Lloyd Dobbins host Monitor tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, and Mountain Time. And Chris Wallace will be here tomorrow for Nightly News. I'm Jessica Savage from New York. Thank you. And good night from all of us at NBC News.